of us are sad because of something temporary. You lost wealth. Everybody's lost wealth. Nobody seated here has not suffered a loss. Everybody has. They've dealt with it differently. They've suffered at different levels. Allah tests you according to your level. In one narration, the hadith says, Allah tests you according to how much He loves you. When He loves you more, He tests you more. That's a hadith. It's because when you have a problem and an issue, it is human nature that when you have a problem, you start looking for solutions. And a believer will look for solutions by getting close to Allah. So when Allah wants you to become very close to Him, He gives you a bigger problem because He knows if you didn't have this one major issue in your life, perhaps you wouldn't even be bothered about reading Salah. You wouldn't even be bothered about calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, you know what? Think about those who have less so you can appreciate what you do have. So I said, my brother, take a bucket, fill the bucket with the water. When you are ready, you take a little pan and then you can bath out of the pan. He says, I didn't think of that, but it's so inconvenient. Look, when you want to be sad, and then you look for sadness, even when there's happiness glaring you in your face. You need to know this. So don't be sad. My brother, there is a solution. You have water, alhamdulillah, learn to bath with cold water. It is more healthy. Go and read about the health aspects of bathing with cold water. I'm not saying we should force ourselves, but it will help you the day there is no hot water. And then you don't need to keep showering every day with full force shower. You, all you need is, you need to be able to have a little bit of water that you can do your ghusl and your bath. Fill it in a bucket. Learn the bucket challenge. When people spoke about it, they were wasting water. With us, we've been doing that bucket challenge ever since we were born. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. You save water and there is barakah. Perhaps Allah wants to show you. People complain, you know what? We only have electricity for three hours a day. They are nations that have not seen electricity for months on end. What about that? Thank Allah you have it for three hours. You have an inverter. You have a generator. Stop complaining. These tests are far easier than those who are being bombed and aerial bombing on a daily basis. Do you agree? Why then do we say I'm sad? So the whole world will be sad. Who is going to thank Allah? You cannot say I am sad because Allah has taken away something material from me. You have to say Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. I praise Allah upon all conditions. Wa a'udhu billahi min hali ahli nar. I seek Allah's protection from one condition and that is the condition of those who shall be cast into hellfire. Besides that, Alhamdulillah. Something happens, Alhamdulillah. All conditions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Another very important way of combating sadness, my beloved brother and sisters is to look at the creatures of Allah. Look at the trees, look at the animals, look at the greenery, look at you, when you're breathing the air, consider what you are breathing, take a look at the sunset, the sunrise. Allah says, indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the rotation of the night and the day are signs for those with intellect. Remember this. There are signs. These signs, yes, they show you the oneness of Allah, the closeness of, that you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of Allah, but they also alleviate your suffering. There are many signs. This is why when a person is stressed, sometimes those counselors will tell you, go out to Inyanga perhaps, go out somewhere to Chimani Mani, in the Eastern Highlands, go and take a look at the greenery, sit and watch. You see the water, you see the horses, you see a beautiful scene. What does it do to you? It de-stresses you. For a disbeliever, it's just the scenery. It's a creator, creation of Allah. For us, it is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What has Allah not given me? I can travel. People complain about potholes. There are nations that don't have roads. Forget about potholes. You become sad because you've suffered a little accident. People have not only lost limbs, they've lost loved ones. May Allah help us. Don't be sad. Really, these days are not permanent. They are temporary. The only time you should be sad is when you have drifted away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is something that saddens a lot of people. People become depressed. They become sad because your life is full of partying, full of gambling, full of adultery, full of drinking, full of drugs. How do you not expect sadness when you are far away from Allah? You want to combat the sadness. Come back to Allah. Come. Allah is waiting for you. Allah becomes so happy when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah is happy, He will definitely make you happy. My brothers and sisters, remember, sadness is something that you can do much about. And the evidence of it when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not be sad at this and do not be sad at that. You know when Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was 
was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave. And they were in this cave of Thawr, where on their way to Medina Munawwara, and the, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the greatest to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you hear the name of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, go out of your way to say radiallahu anhu. It is important because he was the best without a doubt. It was clear and it was completely manifest. May Allah bless him and bless his entire family. I mean, so he was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was saddened slightly. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read verses that were revealed to him. A portion of it, don't be sad. Allah is with us. Do you know what this means for me and you? How can you be sad when you know Allah is with you? How can you be sad when you know Allah is with you? No matter what they're going to try, it's only by the permission of Allah that they will be able to achieve if Allah wants them to. And it's going to be better for you either way. This is why I want to end with a powerful narration that I'm sure we've heard before, but it always brings about a lot of comfort in our hearts. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. All of his affairs are always good. Nothing bad can happen to a true believer. Why? إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ذَرَّاءُ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ When goodness happens to a true believer, he is thankful. So it's better for him. It's good for him. How do you thank Allah? When you have happy days, my brothers and sisters, and this is one way of combating sadness that may be in your path. When you have happy days, get close to Allah. Don't wait for the sad days to quickly turn to Allah. Although that is okay, but it's not good enough. The hadith says, Ta'arraf ilallahi fi rakha'i ya'rifka fi shiddah. Get close to Allah in days of ease. And you find in days of difficulty, Allah will be very close to you. You won't even feel. You will carry on. So the hadith says, when sadness overtakes a believer, or should I say when, sorry, not sadness, when something bad, you know, darra means something harmful, hurtful, something that is perhaps not to your liking, overtakes a believer. He is patient. He bears sabr. He knows the reward with Allah. And so therefore it is better for him. This is why his affairs are amazing. Goodness happens, he is thankful. Bad happens, he is patient. But he's never upset with Allah. He's never angry. He's always smiling. He's always remembering Allah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. These are the words. These are the actions that will alleviate the sadness that we feel sometimes as human beings. Because a true believer is always taught the method of earning closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will be granted the companionship of Muhammad in the akhirah, in Jannah, subhanallah. And they will be granted the companionship of not only all the prophets, but all the martyrs and all the pious. When Thawban heard this, subhanallah, he began to smile once again. And he used to tell the other people, do you know this verse was revealed because of me? Do you know that my love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so much that when I began to think that I may never see this man again, Jibreel alayhi salam came down with verses to tell me that don't worry if you want to be with him, if you want to be his companion in the akhirah, all you have to do is just obey the instructions he has come with and stay away from the prohibitions that he has prohibited and you will achieve that rank. May Allah grant that to us. This is a lesson to show us all that if you want to be a companion of Muhammad sallallahu in the akhirah. All that is required is to become better Muslims and to obey his command and to stay away from the prohibitions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All your sadness will be taken away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness in this dunya as well as in the next. The ultimate sadness will be when a person is cast into hellfire. And the ultimate happiness will be when a person receives his book on the day of judgment on in his right hand. And he is told for you is paradise. Then you need to know that's it. I'm the happiest man on earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us the best of this world and the next.